the law of vampires. The first spell we have, Van Hell's Dance Macabre. This spell is a bit of a con job, because it gives plus 25 speed and plus 24 melee attack, but you'll only ever get one of those active at a time, because speed only impacts the foot speed of a unit, it doesn't do anything to their attacks. So while you're running, you can't use melee attack, and while you're in melee, you can't use speed. So you're only paying for one or the other with this spell. The overcast version, which doubles the cost in magic to eight, can hit an unlimited amount of allies if you can squish them all into a small space. But personally, I'd say to kind of avoid this spell because it doesn't really bring that much to the table. 25 speed isn't that much. 24 melee attack is nice and it can be good to boost some of your stronger units while they're fighting certain stronger enemies. But for four or eight wins of magic, I can't help but feel like that would be better spent on one of the more important spells in this lore. And that brings us to Invocation of Nehek, the most important spell in this lore. If you only use this spell when you play vampires, you can be safe in the knowledge that you're using your magic well. It only costs 6 wins of magic, has a 30 second cooldown so you can use it often, and heals a unit for 15% of its health roughly. And there's the overcast version for 12 wins of magic, which will do the same thing but for up to 4 targets, again healing just under 15% of their health. What's nice about Invocation over other healing spells as well is that it will resurrect dead combatants once all the living models have had their health restored. So you don't have to worry about wasting it on high model count units like you do with other healing spells. Ideally you'd want to cast the overcast version trying to hit 4 targets in one go because this is the best value for magical money. You can heal 4 units for 15% of their health for 12 wins of magic, whereas if you did that individually on 4 units it would cost you 24 magic. But having a situation where three or four of your good units are all together and worthwhile healing is not necessarily that common. So it's fine to just use the single invocation of Nehek without overcast just for six wins of magic to heal up your strongest of units. And that's the other thing with this spell. Much like any healing spell, make sure you use it on the worthwhile targets. Your strongest vampire counts units. Your graveguard, your cavalry, especially blood knights. Your monsters that don't have regeneration like bargeists. Your lords and heroes that don't have regeneration. And why not things with regeneration? Because of course they will heal themselves. Regeneration allows a unit to heal infinitely until it reaches its healing cap. When you use invocation on a unit, it doesn't increase their healing cap or anything. It just makes them go to their healing cap faster essentially, which for the most part isn't necessary. And you're kind of throwing away that free healing that regeneration brings. Although that being said, if a regenerating unit like a Vargolf or a Terrorgeist is about to die and is starting to crumble, an invocation could potentially bring them around and save them from that crumbling before it turns into disintegration. But yeah, if you want to play the vampire counts well, you should be spamming off invocation as much as possible on your stronger units. Next, another key spell, Raise Dead. Pretty important, not quite as important as Invocation, but still very important. Only costs four wins of magic, raises up some zombies, and you get seven uses of it, which plays into the Vampire Count's main game plan of bog down the enemy with crappy little units as much as possible very well. If you need something a bit better though, there is the Overcast version for six wins of magic, only two wins of magic more, which will give you Skeleton Warriors instead, who are much better at doing a bit of damage and surviving a bit longer. Not much better, but still enough to make a difference in the right situations. Now this spell has many, many good uses. One of the main ones is getting behind the enemy line. If they've got missiles back there, you can spawn some zombies up to go and disrupt those missiles, especially important on strong missiles like Sisters of Avalon here. The same thing with artillery as well, spawn it up on top of those just to stop them firing for a while. These zombies do of course degrade over time so they won't be there forever but they'll be there long enough to buy you some time to get some other units into these units that you're trying to disrupt. Like here I've got some feasters in the dark coming up behind this artillery although they're about to waver just from the zombies alone anyway so very nice. Zombies also make a great meat shield. If you spawn them up in front of your army before the rest of your army comes in range of the enemy, your enemy will use their missiles on these crappy zombies. In this case, I spawned some up in front of Dark Elves who have very strong armor-piercing missiles. And as you'll see, they're going to waste a lot of their ammo piling into these zombies that are pretty much useless to me. But that's good money wasted for the enemy. Or you could just spawn them up in the middle of all the fighting just to make it more difficult for the enemy to move their units around. And like I say, that's what the vampire counts do best. They bog down the enemy. They make it difficult for the enemy to maneuver and to get units in and out of good matchups. You can use them just to pin down the more mobile units of an enemy army. They could also provide a roadblock to protect your lord from somebody pursuing them. They could also fight alongside frontline infantry just to take some of the damage off them and to sponge it up a little bit. There's many good uses for zombies or skeleton warriors spawned up with raised dead. 
Honestly, if I'm playing vampires, I'll pretty much only use Raise Dead and Invocation of Nehek. You don't really need any of the other spells in this lore book. If you just spam all your Winds of Magic into these spells, you're making good use of it. Next, to Gaze of Nagash. Now this can be a handy spell as magic missiles are always useful. Seven Winds of Magic, magic missile, good against large targets, lords, heroes on mounts, things like that. Does a good bit of armor piercing damage, explosive damage, and magical damage. So it's a nice little tool to help whittle down those stronger single entity enemies, or just large stuff in general. There's also an overcast version, which is quite expensive at 14 Winds of Magic, but it doubles the amount of projectiles, so essentially doubles the damage. The use of this spell is very simple, like I mentioned, just aim it at lords and heroes and snipe it away at them to take off some health. And the same thing with any single entity, big large stuff, the bigger it is the easier it's going to be to hit and to make sure you get all of those 5 projectiles landing to maximise the damage. But you could use it against other types of units as well, monstrous infantry here for example could be a good target, maybe cavalry, maybe even infantry as well, but one thing to remember is that the vampire counts generally have a weakness to large enemies because they don't have a lot of great anti-large, and this spell is a great way to provide some anti-large to take down those bigger targets because Lord knows, Skeleton Spearmen aren't doing the job. And this also provides a nice bit of anti-air as well, because the vampires don't have any kind of missiles or artillery units. Things like flying units can be a bit of a problem, but if we can shoot them down with Gaze of Nagash, well, that can be a good reason to justify using the magic on this spell rather than Invocation or Raise Dead. Next to another spell I'd advise you to generally stay clear of. Curse of Years, minus 24 melee attack, minus 25 speed, plus 15 cooldown for the enemy, 11 winds of magic is an area effect as well. Now this spell has the same issue as the first spell where you can't use the minus melee attack and speed at the same time. They simply, it's one or the other. So you're not really paying to use both at the same time. The increased cooldown 15 seconds, it's not that great and it's only useful if you have something that can be affected by cooldowns in the area like a lord or hero. So for me, this spell's only really good for the reduction of melee attack if you can hit a bunch of enemy units. That'll slow down their damage output and help your boys survive, but for 11 Winds of Magic, that's quite expensive, and for 12 Winds of Magic, you could just overcast Invocation and give them healing instead to negate the damage that they receive from enemies, which is probably a better way to use it than reducing the melee attack of enemies. So for me, there's nothing really that good there. The increase of cooldown, I mean, it would be good if it was longer, but 15 seconds in the grand scheme of a 3-4-5 minute battle, that's absolutely nothing, so it doesn't really do anything. And it's only going to do anything if there's a lord or hero in the area with abilities on cooldown. So there's too much potential to not really make the most of everything this spell can do. At least I don't think it increases cooldown if a lord or hero is outside the area. I don't see why it would. So I think, honestly, if you want to use this spell and you want to make the most of the magic cost of it, you've got to find the perfect situation where you can reduce some melee attack, potentially reduce some speed as well, which is probably impossible, and hit something you can reduce the cooldown of. It's just a bit too much of a faff, in my opinion. And again, the magic will be better spent elsewhere on Invocation or Raise Dead. Or perhaps you've got a lot of magic built up, in which case you could dump it all into Wind of Death for 15 magic. This is a very powerful spell, capable of lots of damage, 100% armor piercing, magical damage as well. Moves in a straight line, so it's predictable, you know exactly where it's going to go. There's also the Overcast version, which costs 20 Winds of Magic. Increases the damage though, not all armor piercing now though, much more base damage it seems but still very powerful. Now, the only situation you really want to use this spell, in my opinion, is one like this, when all the enemy units are stood still fighting your units in a nice straight line that Wind of Death can absolutely tear through. This ensures that you're making the most of it and that it doesn't miss and thus waste the 15 Winds of Magic you put into it. If you use it in a situation like this, where it's going to be kind of missing half the time, it's a bit of a waste and not really making the most of the potential and the magic that you spent on casting this spell. It can certainly do some damage even hitting what it's hit here. It could have done way more though. For me, I just like to try and get the efficiency of it. If you're not someone who's so bothered by that, then well, you could just use it wherever. The other trouble here using it in the open is that units will move out the way like so, and it basically becomes a bit of a gamble to use it in this kind of situation, which for me is not how I like to play Total War. But that's just me, you don't have to play like me at all. This spell can be very powerful in the right situations, but just understand it is a bit of a gamble with the 15 Winds of Magic you spend on it unless you look for those very specific situations of nice straight lines of enemies that you can plow through. So that's the lore of vampires. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all these patrons and YouTube members who support this channel. I will see you in the future.